Good afternoon. It works. Classic asset management methodologies are broken. They take into consideration only three of these four elements, internal, external, and material, and they ignore nearly 60% of the cost of maintaining an asset. This is estimated by the Department of Energy. This was a challenge we had at the city of Des Moines. How can we impact the bottom line cost of our organization and manage the assets more effectively? We decided to be first responders. Basically, when you buy a piece of equipment, whether it's a pump, a motor, a fan, two things start to happen. It starts to use energy and it begins to degrade, as this chart shows you. To keep it from failing, you use a maintenance program in the form of preventative or predictive maintenance. This saves you money because it keeps your equipment from failing and keeps it operational. Upon implementation, M4 Asset Sustainability showed us immediately that our equipment was using more energy than it was designed to, allowing us to support a new method of maintenance, consumptive maintenance. And it also was allowing us to respond to the equipment as it consumes energy inefficiently before the inefficiency caused a failure. The city of Des Moines has a population in excess of about a half a million people. We not only support Des Moines, but 16 surrounding communities. Uh, our facility handles about 260 MGD a day, and we have 70 metropolitan pumping stations throughout the area. Uh, the M4ASC implementation took us one year and a change in management to accomplish. Our motivation, 60% of the energy consumed by the city of Des Moines come through the WRF. Implementation of continuous commissioning majors were achieved through an interface between our m 4 am Asset Sustainability Edition, our SCADA, and our Hawk Wims Data Historian. I think we were one of the first in the nation to do this. This was the results. This was one of our first reports that we uh, came out with. As you can see, we went with three different systems. We went with our 2,000 horsepower process air blowers, our 700 horsepower main raw water pumps, and our return sludge pumps, 100 horsepower. Now you'll notice a difference in the horsepower of these systems. We were wanting to see just what the difference was of savings that could be attained by using this program. If you look down here, the cost per delta between our highest cost per hour to operate asset to our lowest cost was 1622. The next one was 630. In our 100 horsepower motors from a facility of our size, we probably would cut it off at that point, just for us. Uh, but this still led to a savings, an annual savings, of close to $200,000 for our facility. Our project goals for phase one was to identify equipment targets and start with our heavy hitters, establish bases for condition monitoring. We ultimately wanted to look at efficiency readings and monetary control limits. Verify data, what data was available, what could we do to acquire that data, and what instrumentation, if any, needed to be installed on each asset to obtain that data. Uh, develop data integration to N4 Asset Sustainability. We basically designed an integration mechanism which could be administered locally, is flexible and scalable. We configured the M4 Asset Sustainability program, making use of some of the key ASE functionality, such as condition monitoring, energy usage and rates, alerts, and meter-based PMs. These next three slides will show you uh, the three systems that we uh, in implemented during phase one. These are our 700 horsepower main raw water pumps. 
basically the pumps uh, lift the wastewater to an elevation of approximately 60 feet from that point. They flow by gravity through the entire plant. We have six of these pumps. Normally there's two in operation at any one time. During high flow uh, seasons, which we seem to have about every other year now, uh, we have five operating at uh, any given moment. These turned out to be our energy hogs, these process air blowers, 2,000 horsepower. We have four of these that supply air to six aeration tanks. Typically, it only requires one blower to supply the air, but as hydraulic or organic loads increase beyond the capacity of the one blower, we'll turn on a second blower, and that's normally just during high flow seasons as well. This was the last systems, the little 100 horsepower return pumps. Um, the purpose of these are to return sludge from the concentrated uh, sludge back to the aeration tanks. Uh, we have nine of these pumps. There's three in three different systems in three different locations. Normally, we just have one pump running at a time uh, in each one of those locations. During high flow, again, we can have up to three, or three of these pumps, all three of them in each uh, three locations operating. Uh, condition monitoring, established condition monitoring bases or profile. We are gathering equipment level data, such as runtime, amps, kilowatt hours, which is excellent information. However, this is not the whole picture. You must take into account the system within which they are operating. All of these assets can operate both alone and in conjunction with other redundant assets in a system configuration. Measuring the efficiency rating has to be done at a system level. The total system efficiency is a function of total system flow. Having the historical data for these measures allows us to assess whether current efficiency operates between a plus or minus two standard deviations off of a normal curve. These are the two systems we use to push data into the M4 ASC program. The equipment data sources are a plant SCADA system. Uh, years ago, we implemented a control net and controlled objects, PLCs, all the way through the facility. Uh, we use a Rockwell RSVUSE program. Uh, our Hawk Wims data historian, uh, with, uh, re with the data that we store in that, it really uh, has set us up with a real time. Uh, availability of data. The wastewater industry has great process control and automation in general, well ahead of many industries. We realize that. That's why we're out here to try to help some of you. This is basically a data integration screenshot in ASC. This screen is used for entering and setting for alert equipment data. It's also used for alert equipment data user-defined field mapping. Now this is just one of many screens that we use. Uh, we also build our grids, we build our alerts. Um, we have a few other screens to set up our SQL scripts in and uh, that launch all the alerts and uh, we have a uh, alert board, dashboard, if you will, monitoring system. Hmm, they missed a slide. Infrared sustainability configuration. Our meter-based PM schedules, our condition monitored assets, our alerts, our utility bills, our trending, our operational costs. This is stuff that we are all currently monitoring on a real-time basis. As you can see from this list and this presentation we have implemented, the M4EAM with the goals and objectives in mind of the WRF. We implemented to manage our assets with the entire cost of the overall picture that we were, and goals that we were trying to obtain. And, show, and this shows here 
what we have found was exactly as the Department of Energy estimates. That energy does represent around 60% of the total cost to maintain the asset. Now we can manage the asset completely with the entire cost picture in mind. And that was all done through a grant by the Department of Energy. We are currently implementing these two phases now and have just been awarded another grant. Uh, remaining assets that we're going to implement uh, using this second grant are our grit and channel air blowers, our W3 effluent water pumps, our HVAC systems, our biogas generator systems, and our WRA pumping stations. We have installed two parent electric and gas meters in the facility and 24 submeters. We are also adding in our gas and energy bills. In fact, we have went back seven years to do this. So we're actually establishing trending back to seven years ago with this program. Uh, these are some of the advanced alerts and analytic reports that we are having developed as we speak today. Uh, they'll show our base load, our base variance, our gas index, our peak demand, our phase balance, imbalance, total harmonics, power factor, audit reports, and much more. Uh, we're also expanding our integrator piece. Uh, we have a PDM uh, contractual uh, service provider that has a web-based application. Uh, from their infrared thermography, their uh, vibration analysis or oil analysis, uh, they post alerts on their board, on their alert board. What we're going to do is pull those alerts off of their web-based application, push them through ASE, and then push them out in the form of an email notification or else a work request. And last but not least, we're going through past 55, 50,001 ISO energy compliance certification. I don't know if anybody else has done that in this room. I understand in the water and wastewater industry, we're apparently the first in that. The WRF has, is one of the premier EAM ASC implementations in the nation. We have set up and configured our EAM program around a maintenance best practice environment with root cause failure analysis and facility condition assessments configured into the program. Our work orders are configured around an overall equipment evaluation with problem, cause, and failure coding, coding built into them. In conclusion, just to recap some of what we've said, ASC has provided us with increased visibility of energy intensive equipment such as run times, kilowatts, cost per MGD, and cost per hour. It's helped us to identify our energy efficient equipment. It's provided reliability engineers data to improve efficiencies of underperforming equipment. Phase one saving opportunities amounted to $200,000. Uh, savings did not require expensive equipment repairs or purchases, but rather a simple change in blower and pump scheduling. It improved our overall energy efficiency and maintenance productivity by some 25%. Of course, most of this was done in our case by grants that we acquired from the Office of Energy Independence. I tell you, there's a lot of money out there in these grants. And Ralph has asked me to tell you something else that we're doing. I didn't prepare a PowerPoint for this, but uh, we'll give you some idea. One of my many hats there is to manage the fleet at the WRF. This consists of about 170 vehicles, plus or minus. Um, right now, we're in the process of uh, t taking our biomethane and uh, we're, we've implemented a recovery project at the WRF. Basically, we were burning off about 200,000 SCFs a day of this methane gas. And then we come uh, to, we found this, uh, a user across the street from us, Cargill. Many of you have heard of Cargill. Uh, we started subsidizing their natural gas usage, and it actually was to the tune of about $80,000 a month. So we were making $80,000 a month off of that. 
And that was basically cutting their energy bill in half for them. Um, we're also right now, I'm buying conversion kits for most of the fleet. Uh, any new vehicles I order are CNG vehicles. Um, we are, have designed and are drawing up a gas cleaning compression system with a fast fill service pump. Um, we also, uh, within the next two to three years, plan on having the entire fleet burning biogas. Uh, right now we also have three 600 kilowatt engine generators and we have converted those over to using biogas. Those three engine generators supply one third of the energy usage at our facility. We figured we'd have a payback of about three years on that project, but the Inter Iowa Department of Energy stepped in again and wants to give me a grant to do the whole project. <laughs> so, you know, and, and I don't, the thing that's unique about this is I don't call them. They're, they're so uh, excited about all this cutting edge stuff that we're doing. They actually, I have a website, uh, well it's on their website, but uh, under my username, they keep posting grants that I should apply for for stuff. And they don't do, you know, I don't know if they do this for anybody else or not, but they're, you know, they actually are throwing money at you when you're using it for this cutting edge implementation. So if anything, I'd advise many of you to really get on those uh, Department of Energy websites, uh, see what uh, type of grants are available for you or for some of the projects you want to implement. If uh, you have second thoughts about uh, getting into continue, you know, continuous commission monitoring, and that was one thing when I applied for the grant to implement this uh, program, what I did is I went to the Department of Energy's website in Washington, D.C., and I downloaded what they say about continuous commission monitoring, and since I'm a grant writer, I submitted that with the grant. They couldn't deny their own recommendation, so I got the money. 